What library do you usually use for scheduling tasks in Elixir? Hey, what's up? It's Mark at Alchemist.camp, where we learn Elixir and Phoenix by building things. So the answer to the question is usually none. Usually I just use built-in primitives that you get out of the box in Elixir and haven't really encountered a big need for a scheduling library. But I do have an honorary mention. There is a library I've encountered more recently that I'll mention at the end. So if you look at Alchemist Camp, there is this concept called Green Elixir. Basically, I give a point of Green Elixir to every single person who is signed up for an account on the site every single week. And then they can use that Green Elixir to vote on feature requests or tutorial requests from me. Unfortunately, it's almost all tutorial requests, which uh, takes a lot more time than feature requests, but I, uh, I will endeavor to get through as many as possible. Um, this isn't using any task library or job library. I, I'm basically just using something called gen servers. So this is a pretty standard Phoenix application, and my app is called Campsite because it's Alchemist Camp. If you look in the application.ex file, which any Phoenix app will have, there is a start function, and this includes all of the OTP apps that get started with your app and get put into its, uh, its supervision tree. And Phoenix puts some in there automatically. I have added some of my own down here, campsite, cache, and topic of this one, scheduler. And this scheduler is a pretty straightforward gen server. Uh, if you're not familiar with what gen servers are, uh, they're just an abstraction over lower level OTP primitives. They're pretty important in Elixir, but you don't need to understand the details of them to be really productive with Phoenix. So I'm just gonna go over at a really high level what this, uh, what this scheduler is doing. I've got a few constants in here. Uh, this one just is the number of seconds in, or the number of milliseconds in a day. So 3,600 seconds in an hour, 24 hours in a day, 1,000 milliseconds in a second. Start link is boilerplate for a gen server. After the start link's done, it hits the init function, and we've got a schedule daily function that I call from there. Schedule daily calculates uh, well, it gets a time of midnight, so time new 000 will give you midnight. Then it gets a current time and calculates the number of milliseconds past midnight that it is. Then using that, full day minus milliseconds past midnight is the number of milliseconds until the next midnight. Then I call process.send after, so that sends a message to a process a certain number of milliseconds after. So I'm sending it milliseconds until midnight after, which means I'm sending the process a message of daily at the next midnight. And this message name doesn't have any special significance. I could have called it foo and it would work the same way. There's a handle info up here for daily. So once that message arrives at midnight, it'll uh, well, if it's a, a Sunday, it'll award Green Elixir to everyone. And if it's not a Sunday, it'll award Green Elixir to members. So basically, Alchemist Camp members get Green Elixir every single day, and free users get it once a week. And these two functions, award green to all and award green to members, these are just you know internal logic for uh, incrementing people's uh, Green Elixir. So if we just look at the scheduling, this is all we've got. So it's it's not like we're doing a ton. Okay, so that was a bit much for my MacBook Air M1. Uh, it just couldn't handle the video. So I've let it rest and I've decreased the size of uh, my own video. Hopefully this will go a little bit more smoothly. So as I was saying, uh, there really isn't a whole lot of logic around scheduling, but this is a little bit tedious. You know, we, we need to do this microsecond or millisecond calculation in order to schedule something every day at midnight. 
And as you may be familiar, you know, cron jobs can do things every day at midnight uh, by just setting, you know, one uh, one string instead of you know four lines and, and logic. So uh, there is a tool called Erl Cron, which is uh, just basically cron jobs in Erlang, which has been popular for a long time. There's also an Elixir library now called Quantum that I discovered relatively useful or relatively recently, and I think it's uh, if I needed something more than just writing my own with Gen Server, this is probably what I would use. I, I tried it recently and it was it was uh, a breeze. So I'm gonna. Uh, install that in mix and just give you an example of how it works so quantum version 3.0 as of uh, September in 2021 at least I don't think this library will change that fast though then we need to make a scheduler so they suggest that you call it scheduler I've already got one called scheduler so I'm gonna make a new module called quantum scheduler and you notice that we're using gen server in this file well we're going to use quantum for the quantum one and it uses gen server under the covers so camps oops this should be a module so campsite.quantum scheduler and use quantum then we also have to give it the name of our otp app so uh, OTP app. Uh, in the case of this site, it's called campsite. So campsite. It's generally just going to be the uh, the atom snake case form of whatever your whole app is called. And that's all we really need to put in the scheduler. The uh, the job itself goes in the mix file. So go to or in the config file config. Exs. So need to add a section here for quantum and I'm just going to copy that from the docs just because there are okay so I'll just grab this chunk and you can see they've got some examples of different cron jobs if you're not too familiar with cron it's it's a little bit cryptic but it's it's not bad like this first star here is minutes and then the next one is hours Next is day of the month, then month of the year, and then day of the week. So if you have a star, it'll do it every single one. So this will be like every single minute. And this would be minute nine of every hour of every day of the week, of every, you know, so on. And uh, if you have this star divided by 15, then it's like every 15 minutes. You can also have more complicated syntax. And it's got a few uh, built-in um, attributes. You can have daily uh, secondly, hourly, and so on. We're not going to do any of that. Uh, we're just going to do a job every second. So that, that does require uh, a little bit different syntax than we've got here. So seconds take uh, an extended cron format. So that is basically, it's got six of them. So it's got minutes and then seconds and then hours and so on. In order to do that, we have to pass it uh, a tuple instead of just a string. So extended comma, then the extended cron string. And this would do something every single second. And we'll just define a function in line here. Uh, we'll say uh, function, what do we want to do? We'll just print out the time. So we'll say date time dot UTC now. And we'll get the uh, we'll just uh, just print that out so I/O dot puts, and we don't need these other jobs, so I'll get rid of those. Um, one thing to point out is you can either use a function and just an anonymous function in line like I did here, or you can have module function attribute syntax, and I'll, I'll give an example of that in a minute. So this should print out the date every single second. Oh, and it's not Acme, it's campsite, and it's campsite.quantum scheduler. So mix steps.get, and then uh, iex-s mix phoenix.server to start everything up. Oh, you know what? 
there is one more thing that we have to do. We actually have to add it to the application. Okay, so we've got our supervision tree with all the normal things, the campsite scheduler. We're also going to need campsite.quantum scheduler. That way it gets started along with the rest of the app. So I'll have to save that, stop the app, and restart it again, which is going to take a moment again. Oh, there we go. So we can already see the time. Uh, it's kind of ugly. We've got uh, a whole bunch of microseconds at the end, but we can see it is printing out every second. So let's make it a little bit nicer. Let's uh, let's truncate that. So date time dot truncate second, and now we should not get all that other junk. While we're waiting for it to compile, let's clean this up a little bit. Let's take this function out and make a function inside our scheduler to do it. So uh, quantum scheduler, and we'll just call our function uh, log time. And pass it the same thing, and we'll make this, uh, we'll make this, uh, an argument so frequency and frequency okay so and maybe we'll just make this a logger io or logger dot info and require a logger and in here Instead of, instead of the anonymous function, what we'll do is we'll use the module function attribute syntax. So module is campsite.quantum scheduler. And we might actually, I mean, realistically, this might go somewhere else, like a utils library scheduler. There we go. And the function is log time. And it has one argument, which is a, the frequency, so seconds, and that'll that'll truncate it to seconds. And while we're at it, let's change this to just log every third second. Oh, and actually, we don't want to we don't want to print out the whole struct. We should just two string that, and then that should be second, not seconds. So I had to recompile, but we can see now. We're getting the time logged out every three seconds and no microseconds at the end. So this was crazy simple. And if I wanted to do this for giving out Elixir, I could basically uh, I could basically do the same thing, except instead of going on second, it would be minute, hour, day. So I'd be changing this one. So uh, pretty useful. It is a little bit weird. We've got you know we've got all the jobs inside our, our config file, but uh, it is pretty clean if we use the, mod uh, the module function attribute syntax. That is it for today. Definitely check out Quantum Elixir, and I will see you later. If you learned something from this Elixir tip, then go to my newsletter, type in your name, your email, and join. I'll send you summaries with links to my newest tutorials, articles, interviews, and projects. Of course, you can unsubscribe at any time.